Derek Fisher won five championships next to Kobe Bryant. He hit clutch shots. Now he's the head coach and GM of the WNBA Sparks. But still, most of the stuff on the internet is about the Matt Barnes fight. That's the internet for you. But that's also the career of Derek Fisher. He had a lot of success, but there was controversy and tragedy. This video looks at the insane career of the underdog and Lakers favorite, Derek Fisher. Hey, it's Casey, welcome to AM Hoops. Hit subscribe and notification bell, so even if we go live during breaking news, you will know right away. Uh, but it is another Feature Friday. We've been getting a lot of great feedback about Feature Friday, so go check out that playlist linked above. This is sort of mixing it up, right? Because sometimes we do what happened to guys like Nick Young or Jermaine O'Neal, whatever. This time we're just gonna look at the insane career of Derek Fisher because there are a lot of great stories. D Fish was an underdog despite having a brother in the NBA. Normally guys with family ties in the league have a lot of buzz around them. Instead, Fish literally had one scholarship offer. He didn't even make the varsity team in 10th grade. But while his brother's pro experience didn't rub off early, his problems did. Derek's brother Dwayne lasted just 19 games in two seasons because of cocaine use. That bad example kept Derek in the gym and out of trouble while his friends were out partying. So he accepted his one scholarship to Arkansas Little Rock and showed enough to become a first round pick. What? That is a huge jump from one D1 offer to NBA first round. How did he do it? Well, by showing off the skills he would bring to the NBA. Not only did Fish average about 12 points, four boards, four assists with good defense, but he had great leadership. An 18 year old Fisher represented the team in a heated dispute to get a new head coach. It makes sense he would one day be the players union president, but also why the Lakers took him 24th in 1996, 11 picks after they traded for Kobe Bryant. Fish and Kobe started a relationship that lasted until Kobe passed in January of 2020. Look, we're gonna talk about all the teams that Derek Fisher played for, but he will always be a Laker. He won five championships with him and went to seven finals. He went in as a bench role player without many expectations and quickly became a starter for one of the greatest teams ever. And by 2001, he made a reputation. A little dude who made big playoff shots. This dunk over Allen Iverson was the highlight of game two in the finals that ended in a gentleman's sweep and a Lakers chip. His most famous shot was in 2004. Lakers and Spurs tied it to a piece in the Western Conference semifinals. Tim Duncan scored with .4 left on the game clock. San Antonio went insane. Kobe and Shaq were guarded on the inbounds, so D. Fish made history. A turnaround catch and shoot contested buzzer beater with just .4 left. That was his most clutch playoff shot, but not the last. In 2009, he hit the biggest buckets in game four of the finals. The Lakers were down three with 11 seconds left. Fish ties it with a tray. He then hit the dagger three with 30 seconds left in OT. His smooth, lefty, high arching shot was in so many clutch playoff moments. That was Kobe's first title without Shaq in 09, which makes sense why the Mamba had so much respect for his point guard. A lot of times we were the only two there, so we wound up playing full court, one-on-one -on -one basketball and almost fighting, literally. You know, just because we're both competitive and from that point forward, I just gained so much respect for him. But unlike Kobe, D. Fish was not a Laker for life. He played for the Mavericks and Thunder before retiring but was a Warrior and Utah Jazz player in the middle of his career. Fish accepted a three-year, $37 million deal with Golden State after the Lakers' three-peat, but he struggled in Northern California without a superstar to draw double teams. He was traded to Utah in 2006 and had one of the most unbelievable moments in NBA playoff history in the 07 postseason. His 11-month-old daughter had a form of eye cancer that needed surgery on the day of a playoff game. Fisher was in New York City 
but flew to Utah for game two of the conference semis during the game. He found out that Darren Williams was in foul trouble, his backup was injured, so they were using Andre Kirilenko at point guard. Without stretching or even a warm-up shot, Fish entered the game in the third quarter like a hero to a standing ovation. Late in the game, he caused a turnover that forced overtime. In OT, Fish hit, what else? A clutch playoff three to seal the win. Obviously, he was emotional afterward. My daughter's doing very well. We had a successful operation this morning in New York. And uh, I flew back, got off the plane, came to the game. I, I, I'm speechless. The Jazz won that series against Golden State, but lost in five to San Antonio in the conference finals. And that was the last basketball Fish played for Utah. He asked not to be traded, but for his contract to be dissolved to leave the team. Fish told Jazz owner Larry Miller his family needed to be in a city with world-class doctors for his daughter's condition. So they canceled the remaining 22 million bucks on his deal, and he returned to the Lakers for 14 million. D Fish forfeited $8 million just to put his daughter in the best medical situation. There are some Jazz fans who still say D Fish just wanted to be a Laker and it's a big conspiracy. But there's no way he would forfeit 8 million bucks and leave a city that really appreciated him and a team that had just gone to the conference finals just to be a Laker. But we all know what did happen in his second Lakers stint. Fish was key again to the Lake Show winning titles. He won two more alongside Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol. After he was done with the Lakers, he played till 39 years old as a mentor to young Oklahoma City teams and a veteran on the Mavericks. Not bad for a one scholarship undersized point guard. But that brings us to what's happened since his playing days and the most controversial thing in his life, the Matt Barnes incident. So I researched this a ton because I know there are a lot of opinions about this. I listened to both sides of what happened that night and I have a definite opinion of who was right and who was wrong. Matt Barnes was still on speaking terms with his ex-wife and he accidentally heard a phone call where it was clear Fisher was dating her. Not only that, but he found out that Fish spent time with Barnes's two young kids in the house Barnes was still paying for. Barnes drove from Marina Del Rey to their house in Manhattan Beach, which is not 95 miles by the way, that story is totally false. What is correct about that story is Barnes jumped the fence, went in the backyard, and punched Derek Fisher in the face. Barnes left before the police arrived and it blew up on social media. So who is right and who is wrong? Actually, both of them. Fish did not approach Barnes about dating his ex-wife because honestly, that's none of his business. Yeah, they played together for one season, but they weren't close. And Barnes seems like the kind of guy who would have flipped out no matter what. Where Fish was wrong was being around Barnes's kids without giving him a heads up. People said dating his ex was crossing a line. I think being around the kids was crossing the line. Punching him out was obviously the wrong way to handle it, but Barnes is a tough guy, what else do you expect? In the end, not only did Fish marry that woman, but Barnes's kids begged him to make up with Fisher because the kids loved him. They told Barnes, he's a great guy, please make up. So Barnes and Fish made their peace and they're on good terms today. That issue was part of why Fisher was fired as the Knicks head coach. Now, Fish is not only the LA Sparks head coach, but their GM as well. He coached them to a first place record in 2019 and back-to-back -back playoff appearances. So on the court, I think D Fish's legacy is one of the most clutch non-superstars in NBA history. I mean, you think of guys like Steve Kerr or Robert Ory. Like those guys, he had a long career, won championships, but Fish was able to be a team leader despite having one of the most legendary stars by his side. So when you look at his entire career and life as a whole, I would hate for a bunch of people to just think of the Matt Barnes incident when they think of Derek Fisher. Because really that was just one small part and really an opposite part of an underdog inspirational life. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.